Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our Beyond the Words webinar for Introduction to Business Management Fresh Perspectives, third edition. Um, and thank you for joining us today. I'm Janet Nordia, one of your Maskew Miller Learning hosts for the session. While our last minute attendees join, we would like, you, uh, would like to run through just a few housekeeping points to ensure that everyone has a pleasant experience. As much as we would like to see everyone's beautiful faces, we would like you to please keep your cameras off to preserve the call quality. Um, during the Q&A, our hosts and our author panel will switch on their cameras for the discussion and the Q&A. Please can you also stay on mute unless you are addressing the session. There will be time for you to ask the panel questions, but um, you can also post your questions in the chat box if you'd prefer. And then lastly, please note that the session will re be recorded and circulated after the event. So just to run through the agenda, which is a jam packed one for today. Firstly, I'm going to do a very quick introduction to the company and where we have come from, and then I'm going to introduce our panel. We'll then jump into an overview of the title and highlight some of its key features. We're very excited to have some of our authors here who will be with uh, who will be sharing a bit about what makes the new edition exceptional. And then we're going to open the floor for a Q&A session and invite you to participate. We'll then close off with an explanation of how to access the book and who to contact. So a quick introduction on who is Masculine Learning. Uh, most of you in the room will have known us as Pearson in South Africa in the past. However, in 2022, Pearson in South Africa sold their shares of, uh, in the business to Novus Holdings. So although we have a new name, a new look and feel, we still do provide high quality learning products and services that are meaningful to the local industry and make a real difference in the lives of our students. Our purpose is to enable learners to move forward by providing trusted quality educational resources and materials for a brighter future through learning. So I'm going to quickly play you just a brief overview video. So with me today, um, my name is Janet Nodia. I am the product manager for TVET and higher education for Maskumilla Learning. And I have our account managers, Zami Khlati and Michelle Majorko from Maskumilla. And then I, it's my privilege to um, present our author panel for you today. Uh, we have Dr. Sandra Musenji Ajulu, uh, who is the co-founder of Dejo Associates, a management consultancy, and holds a PhD in management from Rhodes University. She leads strategic business digital transformations and research projects for private and public sector organizations. She previously lectured in management at Rhodes University and was a Rhodes Business School and Wits Business School Center for Entrepreneurship Entrepreneurship Research Fellow. She has edited and contrib contributed chapters in several textbooks. We then have Stephanie Vuerta, who was a lecturer uh, in the Department of Business Management at the University of Johannesburg before launching her business in 2011. She has an MCOM in strategic management and a solid teaching background. She currently heads up a franchise group with 30 local franchises and four international franchisees and is a lecturer and student advisor at Edu Experts. Salamin Bashoff is a business management lecturer at Academia, a private higher education institution in South Africa. She has an MCOM in business management and is passionate about marketing and leadership. She prepares students for the workplace and accordingly, her research focuses on employability skills and customer experience management. We're very grateful to have all of them with us today. But just a quick overview of the total authoring panel. There are, um, uh, in total, there are seven contributing authors who represent six higher education institutions as well as uh, as well as the industry. And then before handing over to Zimmy, I'm just going to quickly run over a few of the hallmark series features that this title belongs to. It's part of the Fresh Perspective series, which has been created with the South African students in mind. 
They are written by local authors who use examples and explanations that students and lecturers can really relate to. The style of language is accessible and easy to follow, taking into consideration that many of our students are not native English speakers. Design features like diagrams, tables, pictures and, uh, and breakout boxes chunk the theory into manageable sections and make the textbooks less daunting. They are also priced uh, to be affordable, which is essential in these economically challenging times. I'm now going to hand over to Zimmy, who's going to be taking us through the book and some of its key features. Thank you, Zimmy. Thank you so much, Janet. Good morning, all. Um, thank you for that uh, great introduction. I am Zimi, and I'll be taking you through some of the um, key features of the book. So Introduction to Business Management, which is now in its third edition, is suitable for courses in business management. It covers core theory on the business context across four parts, including the business environment, management theory, entrepreneurship, management tasks, and also business functions and tools to manage in a changing environment. The book places great focus on running a business in all sectors, private, government, and nonprofit as well. It highlights the current local and global context through up-to-date examples and case studies, which provide opportunity to regularly apply what has been learned. It also has QR codes that provide quick access to websites and more. The textbook includes many rich features that expand the key themes of the discipline, and these elements include the following. Learning outcomes, which are clearly stated to maintain focused learning. And before you start scenarios that speak to the focus of the chapter and connect to the students existing knowledge. Um, can you go to the next slide, Janet, unless I'm not seeing it on my side? I have, um, so it's okay. showing on my side, yes. but let me just... Okay, maybe it's a bit slow. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it's showing now. Okay. Um, introduction, um, it gives the students an introduction to the chapter and what will be covered. Um, expand your knowledge provides real world examples of the concepts that the the students are presented with in the chapter. And the key terms provide a clear definition. The talking points encourages discussion and debate around topical issues. Figures, tables, color diagrams, and images break up long text sections for easier learning and take different learners into consideration. And also um, activities to test knowledge. The focus on employability feature offers practical ideas on how the student can map out their career path and also develop specific skills. The QR codes provide quick access to websites and current rich media items. Other key features also include um, chapter review with a summary of the major points, test your knowledge, which offers self um, test questions to check the student's grasp of the subject matter. Apply your knowledge offers new case studies that get the student to apply what they have learned. And critical reflection presents an opportunity to solve a scenario based problem, developing critical thinking skills. Apply your knowledge questions, which relates back to the apply your knowledge section actually reinforces what the student has learned. Investigate further provides additional sources that the students can use to explore the subject further. Then there's also um, helpful websites and also podcasts. Our last set of features are the lecturer support material, the PowerPoint slides which save the lecturer time and support different teaching styles. They're actually also easy to incorporate in the classroom. They were specifically developed for this edition and they provide a valuable teaching tool as well as a visual summary of every chapter in the book. 
I will now hand over to back to Janet, um, who's going to take us through um, the the discussion with Michelle. Thank you. And Fantastic. Thank you so much, Simi. Um, and just to say this is now the section of the webinar where we've reached the author discussion and the author engagement. So again, just a reminder, just to conserve the bandwidth, that um, please only the speakers should activate their cameras during the session and then to please reserve your questions until the end. Um, and we will let you know when to um, when to ask those. Um, please just um, raise your hand um, in the in the Teams interface um, when you have a question and Karen will advise when you can come off mute. And then if you prefer, um, you may also pop your questions into the chat box um, and Karen will pose these to the authors on your behalf. So we're looking forward to an engaging session now with the authors. Thanks very much. Michelle, I'm now going to hand over to you. You are on mute <laughs> and it's all good. Thanks so Thank much. Thank you so much, Janet. Um, I think this is obviously one of the most exciting parts of you know, the webinar where we get to engage with the authors and find out a little bit more in depth about why exactly certain things played out the way that they did and, you know, exactly what it is that we can look forward to in this edition. So I guess this is a question that I can throw out to both Sandra as well as Stephanie. Um, I understand that this is, you know, this edition was ma uh, much anticipated and in business management in general, I think by most institutions as well. Could you tell us a little bit more about what were some of the big changes that were made in the third edition? Okay, can I take that? I'll start. Is that okay? Yeah, um, thank you very much. So it had actually been quite a while since we had actually published um, the edition. And when 2020 came about, there was such huge shifts in the world of business and how organizations run, the, you know, how they do what they do, how they manage. And so we felt that it was important to actually now bring to life um, some of the issues that in the past we had spoken about, for example, you know, working from home was always, you know, something that we anticipated would happen in the next 10, 15 years. Little did we know that 2000 would actually make that, sorry, 2020 would make it become a reality. We spoke about hybrid work, it also happened. We, so it was really an opportunity for us to um, update our text also encourage people to know that management is not stagnant and that the whole world had to actually evolve in how they manage. So things that were done in a certain way, for example, long-term strategic planning might not be so long-term anymore because you actually, or you can't always foresee what's happening in the future. It also allowed us to introduce new terms and, you know, scenario planning, a whole lot of new things that in the past maybe might have been shelved in the back, uh, you know, anticipating that only when you continue with management will you get to learn some of these topics. So, you know, it really um, was a, an opportune time for us to get together and do the necessary updates. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, and Salomine, would there be anything that you would like to add? Or I see Stephanie's also. Thanks, Michelle. Animated. I'm going to just add, I'm just going to add to that. I hope you can hear me. I'm struggling with my camera, so I can see you, but apparently you can't see me. Um, yes, but we can hear you clearly. <laughs> thank you. Like Sandra said, 2020 changed so many things in our lives, in business, in education, and we really felt that we needed to update the book. Um, not everything was bad um, after COVID, but we actually started thinking in different ways, presenting things in different ways. And we really felt that uh, it was necessary for us to update. And I think we really managed to do that. Like Sandra was saying, your long-term strategic planning, really, we had to relook really that. And um, it wasn't so long-term anymore. Things changed very, very quickly. So I'm very excited about what we brought in. We managed to look at all of the changes and incorporate that and make the book come alive so that it's not just a theoretical presentation of what happens in business, but the case studies are all relevant and very, very current. 
and also the the uh, at the beginning of the chapters where we start with you know the before you start section we try to get the student at a place where, where they can relate before we go into the new concept so i'm very very excited about that because a business management lecturing or class for me was the challenge was always to bring business into the into the lecture hall and i think we managed that very well with the book thank you so much stephanie for that answer um and i think you're right i think just trying to bring in the business or the practical element of business into the classroom is one of the most difficult parts um and then to salumin um you know, with the introduction of business management, it includes many reach features um, that Zimi had actually expanded on and spoken to. And, you know, they expand on critical themes of the discipline itself. Um, can we talk about some of those features as well? And if you can tell us a little bit more about the talk talking points as well as the inclusion of these very new and exciting QR codes that are included throughout the title. OK, thank you very much. Um, I would can I quickly ask who of you maybe just give us a thumbs up who of you have used the previous edition, the second edition of this um, textbook? Um, the introduction to business management that's in the audience. Um, the reason why I'm asking is usually when you update a textbook, um, they tell you to update the, the case studies and we do one or two things. But with this edition, we literally, we came together. That was also a hybrid um, meeting. So some of us were in the room and others were on Teams the whole day and we sat for a whole day and we thought about who is the student, firstly, who's going to read this book? And where would we want them to be after going through this book? And that's also why features like that, before you start in the previous edition, it was a little bit more fluffy. It was like, let's plan a party where this time we came and we said, OK, but now you're the CEO or we had real business examples in the let's start. So we, we um, moved away from that. But then the second thing that we, while we were thinking of the student, we thought, well, students are born with this in their hands. Um, so obviously, normal textbooks are boring for them. That's usually what they say. So we included these QR codes um, to just let the textbook come alive. So a student can read something on a business or there's a small case study within the text. And then there's a QR code here in the book and you can just scan it and it goes to a YouTube video on the company or it goes to the company's website because all that information, it's difficult to put all of that in the book. Um, and we have access to such wonderful information on YouTube, for example. So for the QR codes, it's really to bring the book alive and to help the students that is used to having this um, at hand. And then the talking points. Um, we specifically made sure that this can help lecturers to engage in the classroom. So um, when you get to a talking point, you can put that on the screen or just give it out to the students and get them to really engage um, with the content of this book. You. Michelle, you're still on yeah. mute. <laughs> Apologies. Thank you so much, Salumin, for letting me know. But that's wonderful. I like the part where you say that students are born with cell phone in their hands because it is true. Um, I've tried um, to actually uh, scan some of the QR codes and it is quite in, in exciting information and it was even exciting for me to, you know, get the opportunity to do that because we're mainly using these at restaurants and in other facilities to pay for things. So something that, you know, in the middle of your studies or, you know, while you're actually just preparing for a lesson, just to sort of scan that QR code and see it come alive is very exciting. So, yeah, no, thank you for that. Um, I think the next question will be going to Sandra. And it's, 
you know, we are looking at um, students really struggling with employability, and it's not necessarily just that, you know, there are no jobs, but it's also just understanding that even when they do go and, you know, go for interviews or whatever, they still have, the, or there is still a gap that is present between industry as well as institution. So it's still one of the key focuses when you are looking at higher education sector. Are there any features in the book um, that can help students prepare for the workplace in any way and, you know, also prepare for their success in terms of their future careers? Um, and if you can speak or focus on mainly the employability feature as well as expanding your knowledge. Yeah, thanks very much. So, as you've said, um, the comment that, and I, when I was even a lecturer, um, often when we met with industry during graduate um, placement, they would say, you know, students are just not prepared for the world of work. And so we took the opportunity because we literally were given, I would like to say, a blank check. We took the opportunity to try and put as much useful um, tools and techniques that can actually get our students to be prepared for the world of work. So you'll see that in the employability feature, we've actually built it up, you know, in stages. So when you first do a self-assessment of yourself to see what skills you need to be able to manage yourself and then how you need to manage other people and teams. So it's a gradual, um, you know, development of certain life skills but important work-based skills that students can actually develop while they're in the classroom. But also what's really cool is that we don't just say, imagine that you're a CEO, we actually ask students for some of the activities to go and interview you know, people, whether it's supervisors, CEOs, somebody who's actually working to actually gain practical knowledge and experience and then come share with their peers among, you know, in the comfort of, you know, in your tutorial groups or smaller groups. And we think that this is going to really help students to start thinking proactively how to prepare for the world of work. Because in any textbook, you won't be able to talk about all the set of skills that you need. So we've been able to incorporate other skills that are not necessarily part of our section dealing with management skills in this section um, so that um, students are able to really get an opportunity to practice um, and also in, importantly know that these are not skills for just management, but are general skills that you need when you enter the world of work. So to, it's really nice because even if a, a student who's maybe studying history um, is, needs to learn how to get ready for the world of work, these skills are also applicable. So it's not just applicable to management students, it's applicable and useful for students who are looking to enter the world of work. Now with the expand your knowledge feature, we also again took the opportunity to get case studies um, to get people to talk to us. So we did a lot of interviews, spoke to people, and then we brought that into the book um, to help students understand certain concepts in more detail or to see how certain management concepts are actually applied in the world of work. So that's also really cool. And what we've tried to really do is to have a blend um, and you'll see across the, uh, uh, the text, a blend of South African um, case studies, as well as on the continent, as well as, you know, the rest of the world. And we believe that this balance is quite important because we can't develop students who only manage within South Africa. We're seeing how people are working in South Africa, but working for international companies. So it was really important that our students get the balance of local and global as well. So that's all um, part of our you know, in, sorry, part of our attempt to really get students to start thinking beyond um, the classroom and beyond the university time. Thanks. Thank you so much for that. Um, there are just a number of features that, you know, you're just mentioning where I'm wishing I was a student. <laughs> Because, you know, um, back when we were students, uh, you know, in terms of 
the soft skills and critical thinking skills that you needed in order for you to be actually entering the workplace, you actually just gained as you went. It was not something that you would be able to find in context and something that you would be somewhat able to relate to. And from what you know, you're know, you saying, and I'm hearing that you know, it's basically across the board, anybody could be utilizing this textbook and still be able to gain knowledge on exactly how to go about it when they do get into the um, workplace. So Talamin, can you maybe just um, elaborate a little bit more on the approach that you take into designing the test your knowledge, um, you know, uh, feature or test your knowledge questions in the chapter summary? Yeah, so I just want to add on um, from what Sandra said, we really try to have a broad um, variety of different companies and and all the test your knowledge questions is based on real companies and um, real scenarios um, from the workplace and it is designed so that the the student after um, they have done that they would have a good knowledge of this um, chapter and it's also amazing because the the authors of each chapter is really specialist on those fields so that was really nice so they could really go into depth and and show the understanding of that but now we are telling you all about how we thought about the student but what about you so something that you only see the moment that you prescribe the book is the support material. So yes, we have these critical questions at the end of the chapters, but also in the support material, we have cases and some questions that makes it easy for you to maybe set up a test or exam paper. And we also, there we thought about what the lecturer needs. So we would set questions and we set them mostly up till Bloom's um, third or fourth level um, of, of um, Bloom's taxonomy. And that's also indicated. So we would, um, there's answers for you on all, so every little feature here. So if it's a talking point, we would give our um opinion on the talking point. If it's a test your knowledge, we would um, give possible answers. But then there's also those extra features that you see in the support material that shows you a case study with questions, the, the possible answer for that question, a rationale, and also on Bloom's um, taxonomy, which level uh, this question was pitched. So hopefully that will also help the the lecturers that prescribe the textbook. It was not only that we thought about the students, we also thought about you. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. I know that um, most lecturers really would like for, um, you know, the information to also be accessible to them as easily and also help them in the classroom as they lecture. Um, it's always so difficult having to come up with your own questions and activities if they are then readily available for you. Um, I think, you know, it makes the world of a difference and it makes the lecturers' lives easier. Um, I did see a hand up, but can I just kindly ask that we wait until the end of the session? We are almost done with them um, asking the authors the question, and then I will open up the floor. Um, but before I do that, I think to all of the authors, would you be able to provide a bit more detail about how is a strong vein of the design book? You know, um, how is the, that strong vein? When, yeah. when you were designing the textbook, yeah. you know, how was it there? And just to add uh, the, the uh, of accessibility. Of accessibility. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Of accessibility that was brought into the design of the book. Yeah, so maybe I can start and then my fellow um, team and can, team members can also add. But as you mentioned earlier, accessibility is really one of the key um, features of the perspective series and it's about the, the language that we use. It's about how we communicate complex, um, you know, concepts. You'll see as you go through the book, we have our pop out uh, with little definitions and we've also, you know, put them like in a blue background so that it really sticks out. Um, you will also see it in terms of accessibility, we've also introduced a, a very cool feature, our infographics at the beginning of each chapter, which helps you understand 
what you're going to be doing in that particular section of work and helps you navigate how each of the chapters are, are linked to each other. Because, you know, often when you start lecturing, you want to anchor, you know, the process of management. So we've managed to do that and broken up the text in different chunks, which allow you to deal with, you know, from evolution of management, entrepreneurship, what is management in one section, looking at actually the functions of management as well. And then our last chapter really is, this is quite a dynamic chapter, which tries to bring everything that we've learned to try get people already ready for the world of work and also how to apply what we did. But the issue of language is important, but also not dumbing down to students so that they're like, why am I being treated you know, like a child. These are, after all, first year students, and they range from age and maturity. We know in the past, sections of our text have also been used in the business school context. So the language also had to be appropriate that whether it's a first year student or a seasoned um, professional who's studying the MBA, the language must still talk to them that they feel that they are talking management language, but in a, in a manner that is not complicated and complex. So those are some of the things that um, we really try to do. And you'll see this feature as well. We've introduced a lot of color. Um, you know, that's also important for accessibility. Our font size also is really important to try and really show students when we're dealing with the main topic, subtopics, etc. That's also important so that when students are, are kind of like reading, we, we wake them up at some point and say, okay, let's put this particular feature so they don't just, you know, read and then try and memorize everything. So I think those are some of the things that we really took into account when we're looking at um, accessibility. I'm sure my colleagues have other things to add as well. I can open up the floor to you. Should you want to add anything to that, both Stephanie and Salomine? Thank welcome. you. Contribute. Thanks, Michelle. I agree 100% with Sandra. The big challenge was to adapt the language style in such a way that it, it, it still remains professional and actually prepares the student for when they go into the market. The, you know, what you want to achieve is really prepare them for what's going to happen. When I studied a gazillion years ago, I learned what I learned when I actually went into practice. You, you sort of, everything was theoretical and you had to figure it out when you, when you actually got into the business or into a classroom or wherever you went after studying. And what we've really done here is we've managed, I believe we've really managed quite well to, to bring it down to the level for the student to can, they can relate without uh, dumbing it down, like Sandra said. So when they do move into a business, they the language is not foreign to them. It's something that they that they really understand, and I believe that they'll be well prepared for um, second year, third year, even postgraduate studies, and then going into the, the the business. The other thing that I also found with the book that we I think we managed quite well is to get people excited about business. It's not just a theoretical um, component. When when you know so many times people just take this subject and they just it's like rote learning and they have to get through it. The way we've structured it, you can literally see how it all links together. And there the infographic at the beginning brings it in nicely. So at the end I always say to my kids in business management, if you've got the core concepts and you understand that and you know where it fits in, you will never struggle with the subject. But, you know, our students often say, but it's so boring. Once you, you get excited about business, and I think we managed to do that, it is something that they can take with them wherever they go and they can relate. So, yeah, that is what we really uh, try to do is to uh, make it possible for the student to understand without dumbing it down so that when they do get into practice, they have no idea what we're talking about. Thank you so much, Stephanie. Um, and, you know, before I open up the floor to all 
all of the questions that people would like to ask. I would just have one last question for Stephanie. I mean, as we've already highlighted in terms of the lecturers, uh, Salomine did highlight that, um, you know, they do have resources that are there and are available. Can you maybe explain how this publication will support and enlighten the lecturers' teaching delivery, which is obviously important for business management in particular? Thank you, Michelle. I think we've managed to, to talk about most of these points already, but just from a lecturer's perspective, one of my biggest challenges was to find relevant um, examples that I could use in class. And, um, you know, there are many examples out there, but to make it relatable and short enough to make an impact uh, without taking up too much time in class, um, but still managed to get the, the information across was always a difficult thing for me. So overall, if we look at this publication, the way in which it's been structured really makes it very easy for the, for the lecturer or the presenter of the class because of all the um, examples and case studies that we've put in there without students having to read pages and pages and pages of information. We've also, the talking points that we have in the chapter make it very nice for a, for a lecturer to use in class to quickly get them to engage in what we are busy working with. And then obviously the, the question um, uh, base that we've, we've provided them with the uh, PowerPoint presentations are colorful, exciting. It covers the whole spectrum from level one, right up to three and four, case studies with model answers, I really think that we've managed to um, keep the, the, the workload of the lecturer in, um, in mind when we wrote this and when we worked on this. And we spent a lot of time on the lecturer resources as well. And then also, if you look at your syllabus or your, your um, the things that you have to work through, we've put it out in a way that it is, it follows nicely and I think it'll be easy for uh, lecturers to incorporate or to change over to this publication without losing any of the content that they are already prescribing. Thank you so much, Stephanie. I am going to open up the floor to anybody that would like to ask any questions, you're more than welcome to either ask in the chat uh, or you are welcome to also, um, you know, raise your hand and um, Karen will then take you off mute. I'm so excited about this publication, I must say. Um, you know, it seems very, very well-rounded and exciting and, you know, it feels absolutely fresh. <laughs> as part of the fresh perspectives so yeah any questions that would be coming from the floor anybody that would like to ask any questions earlier i did see that claire's hand was up would you like to maybe either go off mute or I have no um, questions in the chat and no That's hands raised can't. yet. Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. Not <laughs> yeah, a Claire problem. Just said Not she a problem. A hand in error. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'll come off mute and just maybe make more of a comment because I think it's just something, um, you know, so powerful yet so simple is that notion of those infographics um, at the start that just give that big picture to students because I think there's so much information overload that we that we struggle with. And so if someone can just really get, you know, those bare bones and then be able to kind of work from there in a very structured approach, um, I think, like I say, it's something very, very simple, yet something so powerful that can really just make that impact um, on students. Um, and then maybe just asking from your perspective, what do you think are the, are the kind of key challenges that, um, you know, kind of students and lecturers are facing and how this book is going to support them in that? an open question to anyone. <laughs> Sorry, can you, do you mind repeating that? 
Oh, no, I just thought um, just to maybe speak, because, I mean, we know that there are so many challenges, I mean, in whether it's in, you know, uh, environments or, um, you know, just the general level of students. Um, um, and I know we have chatted about it. Maybe if there's just any more elaboration on on how this really is is a title that can, um, you know, just is, is for the kind of student in the here and now as well as the lecturers. OK, all right, I'll, 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 I'll start, I'll have it, I'll attempt. So one of the things you'll notice in the case studies in particular is that we have tried to really use companies that students are, are very familiar with. So our examples um, throughout the, the actual text will talk of companies that people are aware of. Um, and we also then used case studies of people that students might not be aware of so that it also en enables them to learn beyond the big corporate, we, you know, there's small companies, the NGOs that are also involved. So I think what we really try to do there um, is to, to try as much as possible while making the content fresh and um, accessible to also use examples that people can relate to because also if you can't relate to some of the examples, there's also then a, a potential for a disconnect. And then you're like, I don't understand this. But if we're talking, for example, about, you know, um, stakeholder, sorry, um, strategic planning, and we use the example of Bidvest, people are likely to know Bidvest. Um, you know, we also use Google as examples. So I think that's part of what we've also tried to do to make this um, text user-friendly for students and lecturers because you know, those are companies that most of them are likely to know as well. Thank you. Um, Thank you so much for that. Oh, sorry, Salumin. <laughs> yeah, I think I also can't emphasize this enough that this was really a fresh perspective. Um, I So this is the third edition. So you obviously write your chapter the first time and then the second time you update it. And this time around, we really went all over again. We even didn't use the same um, highlighted words. We went through a, a whole thought pro process to make sure that if we give the dis definition of this word, it's really a word that the student won't maybe understand. So later in the textbook, that word is used again. So then it's fine because they already have it. So we this attention to detail in every single part of this book. And I remember Lucille was our... Um, person that we uh, she uh, helped with the the book and then so many times she would say but an example of this um and it it was amazing how many extra examples i've been written writing since the previous books book where um if i said anything she said but give us a practical example so this book is filled with practical examples of companies that students know and you as lecturers <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much, ladies, for the chat. It was absolutely great speaking to you. I'm glad that we were able to actually, you know, um, bring out some of the features as well as the key elements and, you know, how hard you actually worked on the book itself and, you know, it being fresh and all of the relatability that the students also get to, you know, enjoy and the lecturers also getting to enjoy um, having certain resources in order for them to actually use them to teach. I will be handing over back to Janet, but it was absolutely loving talking to you ladies. Thank you so much to all the authors. Fantastic. Thanks, Michelle. And we're now going to just um, wrap up and finish um, along with um, how you actually can actually get access to this. So I'm going to hand back to Zimmy, who will talk us through the final slides. Thank you, Janet. Okay. Um, so just to um, as as um. Okay, sorry. So the book is print and ebook formats, and um, the print is available in bookstores once it has been prescribed. And some of the ebook features include highlighting, being able to make notes, which are easily accessible, and also being able to search for keywords. And
And as we come to the end of the webinar, I just wanted to summarize some of the points. We spoke about how the book highlights the current local and global context through up-to-date examples to activate learning and case studies which provide opportunity to regularly apply what has been learned. And before you start scenarios which connect to students' existing knowledge and also encourage them to think about key topics and also to contextualize them. Greater student involvement is also encouraged through talking points to get students thinking about and discussing topical issues with their peers. Spotlight on employability offers practical ideas on how students can map out their career path and also to be able to develop those relevant skills. Rich media in QR codes, which is very exciting. And as Salomine said, it brings the book live um, and also the websites and the podcasts. Lecture resources are available, um, which include PowerPoint slides and lecture manual as well. It's available, like I said, in both print and also ebook format. I'll now hand over to Janet um, to close for us. Thank you. So um, should you wish to get hold of a desk copy or hear anything more about how you can go about um, prescribing the book for your students, you can connect with um, one of your key account managers. So we have Zimmy, who looks after the Eastern, Western and Northern Cape, the Free States, Mpumalanga and Northwest. And then we also have Michelle, who's looking after KwaZulu-Natal, Gauteng and Limpopo. So those are their details um, and you can reach out. Um, the email addresses are very easy. It's their name, dot their surname at M ml.co.za. I'm just going to leave that on for a second. But yes, they will be more than happy to um, uh, get any access to the textbook to use in order to make those decisions. And then just to say a very big thank you for attending our Beyond the Words webinar for Introduction to Business Management Fresh Perspectives third edition. We really do value your time and hope that you have found the session very enjoyable. And we particularly want to say, thank Sandra, Stephanie and Salamine for their engagement today. And um, just to say that a copy of the webinar and a certificate of attendance will be, um, will be sent to you shortly. But thanks again for joining us and we wish you a wonderful day further. Thank you.